So how are you? I'm doing good, bro. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm glad it's Friday. <laughs> it's kind of Friday every day here, man. It feels <laughs> like it, but then like the, the workload is, is getting back to normal, sort of. So it's like, it, it definitely feels like Friday now. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. So we're on live? Yep, we sure are. Nice. Where's home? You're in California, right? Uh-uh, North Carolina. Oh, that's right. We were talking about you in North Carolina. That's right. Yeah. I so, think the things, things are starting to pick up there. I think some of the stores are starting to open up. Yeah, so like uh, later on today, um, the stay-at-home order lifts. So it allowed, we're in phase one of our reopening. So a lot of people are um, be able to get back together. Yeah. I think get it's at five. Some type of normal. So people are. I think at, at five, I think uh, Taylor Smoke, he told me he was going to open at five today. Mm-hmm. Taylor Smoke and um, Tinderbox and all that kind of stuff. For nice, man. Looking forward to it. So, nice, man. Yeah. So you're in Miami, right? I'm in Miami, yeah. How are things there? No different than everywhere else, man. You know, just doing the things that we got to do, you know. Selling a lot of cigars, man. I mean, you know, people are home now. They're smoking a hell of a lot more. You know, okay. unfortunately, some of the shops are closed. But, um, you know, the shops that are open are doing great. And, you know, um, you know, some are not. You know, some you got to do curbside and this and that. But there's some states that, you know, it hasn't affected that much. And um, But a lot of these catalog companies are selling like crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's – I was saying at the beginning of all this when this start, first started happening that um, for those people who are kind of ahead of the curve or who decide to do a little bit of e-commerce, it seems that they, they were kind of positioned a little bit better for sure this type of situation. Yeah. I know curbside can be a little bit difficult because if you're in states like North Carolina or Miami or New York, you know, people have probably wanted to stay at home and not go out as much. So, um, you know, the e-commerce people were kind of at a better position a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. But you know what? I've done a lot of Zooms. I've done a lot of events in Zoom and, and uh, Whereby, I think it's called or something like that. And, and we've been doing events left and right and, and what I love about this industry, you know, a lot of people respond, you know, they take care of their, you know, of their brick and mortar. And then we did an event two nights ago, sold a lot of boxes and everybody had a great time. And, uh, you know, people respond, you know, I know a lot of people going through a lot of hard times out there, but um, they respond, man. And, and, and that, that's what's great about this business. People are going to continue smoking. Exactly. And especially now, because there's nothing else to, to do almost. Like you, I don't know about, about you, but like when I'm working from home, I might finish my work like a lot quicker or I'll get more done. And then it's like the end of the day, I'm like, oh, you know, You're bored. there's no commute. Yeah, don't, <laughs> like, don't, don't, tell me, don't tell me you, you watch Tiger King or something like that, dude. Uh, I watch, you know what? I watched a couple episodes. I haven't even finished it yet. I, I refuse to watch that. I mean, I started, I watched the first one and I refuse to watch that. But it gets, it gets boring. I mean, doing this all the time, you know, and I'm not, you know, I love my home. I love my family, but I, I just, I'm the type of guy I just can't sit, sit still, you know, and I'm not a big drinker. You know, I'll drink here and there, but I'm not a real big drinker. And then, you know, I tend to smoke a lot. I never smoked at home, never. You know, I, because I, I'm always smoking. I'm always either at the office or in shops or what have you. And, and, um, you know, growing up, my dad would smoke inside the house. So I, I wasn't that guy that, you know, I don't even get an urge to smoke a cigar, you know, at home for whatever reason. And, uh, uh, and if I do, I would just chew a cigar. Uh, but now I just go outside and I keep smoking more and more. I, for the first time, I took cigars from, from here to the office to, to the house because I ran out of cigars. <laughs> the, and I got like three humidors, which I never even touched. I got so many old cigars. And, you know, I keep up with them, you know. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, I, I, you know, I put the water in the distilled water and all that. But I wasn't a big cigar smoker at home. And all of a sudden now, you know, I, I go home and I smoke cigars. I sit outside. I... I I do these zooms and you know, and smoke and stuff and you know and just to pass the time. So our friend Jerome wants to know what is your favorite pairing. I guess that you're trying out at home. Yeah. Um, listen, I don't care what nobody says. The best uh, to pair a cigar with is coffee, bar none. It's coffee. Now, some people like bourbon, some people like this, some people like, you know, it depends if, you know, I, I, I make the cigar, the L'Orange, and, and I, I would drink sort of like a sissy drink with it, which is Grand Mounier, because it's got that uh, that uh, orange, uh, you know, flavor to it. 
and but I, I'm a bourbon guy. You know, when I do drink, it's it's bourbon. You know, and I can care less. I don't. I'm not that that guy. I just because I smoke so many cigars. I, you know, I don't know if my palate is shot or not. But like, if you have a cup of coffee in the morning on the drive to work, I have to put a cigar in my mouth once I. You know, I either do a Cuban coffee or an American coffee, or, and um, that's what we call it as Cubans, American coffee. But um, I have to put a cigar in my mouth. But to pair with, I'm, I'm you know, bourbon. You know, which bourbon? I love Basil Hayden. You know, uh, um, it's my go-to, you know, because some now even uh, Eagle Rare is hard to get. Uh, Buffalo Trace, uh, you know, the, 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 the handles, you can't even find them anywhere. I know when we were at your office last year, I know I, I was the guinea pig for some, some rum that you had. And um, yeah. I know Dawn wanted me to, to just, I think she drank with us. I, I, I think it was like half the table opted out of it. But um, I think me and Don did your your rum, so it was a good it was a good rum. She, she yeah, always talked yeah. about that story. Yeah, I I I get a bunch of stuff because I I sell to a lot of liquor stores and all that, and and they always save me a bottle of these hard to get stuff. But that rum was a Cuban rum. You know, a friend of mine brought me back from Cuba, and that that was fantastic. But I, you know, listen, I'm not that guy to keep them. You know, if you have a bottle, just let's drink it. I'm not that guy that you know, oh, for a special occasion. You know, what better special occasion than we're alive? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Especially these days. <laughs> I, I, I remember I was in Cincinnati and a guy gave me a cigar. It was a Cuban cigar. He was aging it for 20 years. He gives it to me. I grab it. I bite it. I light it up. And he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm smoking a cigar. And he says, I've been aging that for 20 I go, how long How long would you like me to age it for? You want me to keep it for another 20 years or you want me to smoke it? Did I, you know, you gave it to me to smoke it. What better time than now? <laughs> you know what, what do you want me to do with it keep keep aging it you know so what I wanted to do with these deep cuts interviews is I know we, we did a story on you for a tobacco business um, but I always know that some people don't see the stories and stuff so I wanted to bring your story to life basically um, and do it live a little bit kind of going to some questions about how you got to the industry and then dive into, um, you know, Espinosa, because I think you all have a really cool brand. And I know that when we did that story, I told you, even though you, some might consider you boutique, you're pretty big and a big deal to be a, a boutique, you know, company in, in the definition of what boutique is. So I don't, I don't even know what the de definition of boutique is. I, I mean, I don't I think anybody, I, I don't think anybody knows the answer to that. I mean, is it, is it dollars? Is it, I don't know what boutique is. I, I really don't, you know, and I don't think anyone could answer that question. Uh, um, you know, but, um, you know, we're not corporate America by, by, you know, um, cause we make decisions here quickly. You know, if, if there's a brand that, or there's a uh, type of size that's selling that's doing well. And we want to come out with that size when well, we go ahead and we do it. You know, it doesn't have to go through all these channels and this guy's got to agree and that guy agrees, you know, even though here we do a lot, you know, uh, a lot of the guys have input here. You know, I allow them to do that because, you know, the sales manager, Jack, you know, he's the guy who's got to sell it, you know, um, you know, the factory's got to make it. And, and, uh, you know, and, and we have to promote it. How are we going to promote it? How are we going to do this, that? But, but you know, if, if we want to come up with a eight by 80, we, we do it. You know, we don't have to go through that corporate thing. Um, and, and, and everybody has a say so here. Um, I'm not that guy that, that, you know, um, I see Howie saying, what's up, Howie. Um, <laughs> we, we, I'm not that guy that, you know, I listen to everybody. My son's a sort of like a tech guy and, you know, he, he does mostly all the, you know, the advertising aspect of the company. But um, yeah, we're really big in social media. We have a lot of uh, fans in social media, and we've created that. I've traveled a lot, and we make pretty good cigars, and, and uh, we do right by people. And, and, and you know, and I'm no different. You know, if, if a friend of mine owns a restaurant, where well, I'm going to go to eat at his restaurant. You know, whether it's good or bad, I'm going to support my, my, my friend, and that's the way I look at this industry. You know, when, when you go out there and you – and one way or another, you know, you touch people's lives in one way or another, you know, uh, they're going to support you. You know, I, I couldn't name you how many masks uh, I, I've shipped out, you know, to friends that, you know, being here in Miami, you know, we have connections of getting things, uh, you know, th that some people don't, you know, don't have the connections. And, you know, I just got a bag here. I got to ship out of, of, of some of the these K95s, whatever. Um, 
you know, and, and we just try to help people out, you know, and, and, and continue going, continue making good cigars and, and people will respond. So take us back to the beginning, because I, I know part of the story, like I said, because I did the write up on you, but how did you get into cigars? Well, I hated cigars, hated it with a passion because it's no different than how we started the conversation. You know, my dad was smoking inside the house. My dad just left uh, 10 minutes ago. Um, yeah, he's been in quarantine for like uh, four months and he told me either I pick him up or he's, he's coming over here walking. So, you know, uh, so I, um, you know, I told my dad, you know, so I didn't let any of my employees come to work today because just my dad, my son and I, because, you know, I didn't want him around anybody. So he just left. But he was smoking inside the house and um, he didn't care. He was smoking in the bathroom, in the living room, uh, in his bedroom. You know, it, it didn't matter in the kitchen. So, you know, growing up, you know, we used to put our clothes outside just to air them out, you know, because we go to school smelling like an asterisk. He didn't care. He was he just didn't care. You know, how people say, hey, come over to my house. I built the man cave. You know, we can smoke. No, my whole house. The whole house was my dad's man cave. He didn't care, you know. So, you know, I, I hated it because I would, you know, I you know my whole clothes and all that. And then one day he throws a party, and uh, my dad would uh, do a, a roast a pig for any occasion. You know, hey, someone so farted, let's do a pig. You know, <laughs> that's the way he was. it didn't matter. So and so's birthday, this, that, whatever. You know, he, he used any excuse to go roast the pig, and so. Um, you know, and then he throws a party and I'm like 16 and my brother and I, we like kind of stole some beers from him, you know, and we drank them and then we, we took a couple of cigars from him and, and, um, I kind of liked it. You know, I've never gotten sick from a cigar. Um, and so every party we would take cigars and then it just started and just started and look at me now, you know, I, um, you know, I, I started, uh, being a, uh, a in-house rep for a, a, a big company, which is, it was a uh, career back in the day. Uh, but they sold to Camacho, which was uh, the, the brands Camacho and all that. I started with them, and and then I became the sales manager, and then I I, I opened my own retail shop, and then I became a um, independent broker. I worked for a lot of these major companies, you know, the Rocky Patel, the Jewish States of the world, um, Lafleur, Gurkha, Alec Bradley. I mean, I worked for a lot of these companies, and and you know, it's the nature of the beast, you know, when you when you when you're good at what you do. I'm not being conceited, but I was very good at what I did you know, they, they start hiring other people because you're making a lot of money and, you know, because you're on a commission base. And, and I got tired of it. And I told my son eight years ago, I told him, look, uh, this might be the smartest thing I've ever done in my life or the dumbest thing. So I, I'm, I'm like the only father in the world that took their kid out of college. You know, I, I told him I need your help. You know, you can finish that in, uh, you know, online or whatever, but I need your help. So he came on board and, you know, and um, but before he came on board, I, I had him work at a, at a cigar shop because I wanted him to work you know, to him to, to learn uh, the competition, to, to, to learn the business. And so he did that. And then uh, he came on board and uh, it's been eight years that we've been doing this. You know, we've gotten a lot of high rating cigars and cigar aficionado. I mean, we just did a uh, one called war zone for, um, for general. And um, it just got a 93 rated in cigar aficionado, you know? Uh, um, and um, look, it, it, it's what I tell everybody. I, I enjoy cooking. And, and when you cook, when you use good ingredients, you have a better chance of your meal coming out better. Um, and, and cigars are no different. And, and I hate to be repetitious because I tell this to everybody, but it's the truth. You know, you're going to go make a meal and you use good ingredients. You know, you have a better chance of that meal coming out better. Now, there's people that are really bad at cooking and, and nothing, you know, nothing that they do, you know, works out for them. But um, good ingredients make makes a good cigar. And we know what, what our flavor profile is, but, you know, and it's not to knock anybody, but I think we're one of the few companies that um, a lot of our cigars taste different, you know, because there's a, a lot of companies that, you know, they grow their own tobacco and they, they use their own tobacco. And, and we don't, we, we, we try to do, we try to do different things. We really do, you know, and, and so far, you know, according to what people tell us, it's, it's you know, because we use tobacco from everywhere. We're, we're one of the few companies that uses Jamaican uh, tobacco. We're one of the few companies that use Brazilian wrappers, um, you know, that with one in Lorange, I don't know if too many people that use that wrapper. We have a Matafina, we have a Broadleaf, we have a Connecticut, a Habano, you know, we, we just try to get, uh, you know, different things just to create different blends. And, and it's not coincidental that we get all these 
high ratings and cigar aficionado, cigar snobs, uh, cigar dojo, you know, coop, uh, you know, I, I, there's, there's a lot of guys out there, you know, that we get high ratings, but I know what we put in the cigars. And we don't cut corners doing that because the time you start cutting corners is when is when everything just goes, you know, because a lot of smokers are a lot more educated now. And um, and uh, when you when you got so much information, you know, through through what you do, you know, and and they got that information's out there. And so they're no dummies. You know, back in the day, you can put anything. But uh, nowadays, you, you got to do the right thing because if, if all it takes is one bad cigar. And then they won't go back to the brand. Um, when it comes to as a manufacturer, do you worry about or do you even pay attention really to the price of the tobacco when you're looking at what to how to make a good sure, price? Like sure, absolutely, because you know, everything goes up all the time. And that's what people don't understand. You know, the fertilizer to grow the tobacco. Everything goes up all the time. I'll give you I'll give you an example. We used to do a brand when we first started called uh Lazona. We had a Habana, we had a uh it was a, uh, it was like a five dollar price point, but the, the Connecticut we used to get was in Ecuador and Connecticut. And when I started the factory eight years ago, uh, that wrapper was at I used to pay ten dollars and fifty cents for that wrapper. Now it's like twenty four dollars, so it's more than double. So I can't sell that cigar for five dollars anymore. So we had to squash it. We couldn't do it anymore because you know, okay, you raise it to five fifty or certain, it, it it didn't work out. It just you know, it, it just. You know, it, it didn't work out, and and so we we had to stop making that. Um, but the prices go up all the time, and unless you go to one of the factories and realize, you know, the hard work that it takes to make a cigar, and the patience that you gotta have, because by the time the, the tobacco grows, you gotta let it sit, you gotta let it age, yada yada yada. No, no different when you make the cigars, you know, it's a process, and 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 the time is, it, it, you know. It's clicking because you pay for that, you know, and and you got to get your money back in order. And, and, and you know, and, and, and that's got to be included into the price. That's why with somebody, you have a cigar that is, you know, nine, ten dollars and some people complain. But unless you go there, you, you, you won't understand, you know, the hard work and the effort it takes on, on making these cigars. Um, do you have a favorite tobacco to work with or is it all kind of? I'm, look, I, I'm a big fan of Habano because I like that bite. You know, when you get into the Maduros, what happens to the Maduros, in my opinion, not that I don't like them, uh, is that it covers up a lot of the blend. You know, it's like, uh, okay, let's talk about coffee. Uh, okay, do you know why you put sugar in coffee and people put cream and sugar in coffee? No. Because it's not good. <laughs> because if the coffee was good, it wouldn't need the, the sugar and the cream. You know, if you, if you get good coffee, it doesn't need sugar cream. Trust me what I tell you. But in order for you to do that, it's got to be a blend. And by the way, McDonald's got very good coffee now. I'll take McDonald's over Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts water, Starbucks is burnt, whatever. We'll get back to that. It, you know, but when you use Maduro's, you got to put so much potent stuff inside because it's got to overpower the, the, the wrapper. So in order for you to get the taste, of your blend, you got to put some some oomph in it, you know, some some strength in it. Because if not, all you're tasting is the wrapper. So I'm a big fan of the Habano wrappers uh, because it doesn't overpower the cigar as much. So the lighter the wrapper for me, I enjoy the cigar better. And I'm not talking about Connecticut. I'm talking about Habano. You know, but but I, I'm I'm a big fan of the Habano wrappers and the lighter ones. But the problem with the lighter ones is that they're more fragile and they break a lot more. And, and a lot of people don't understand. You know, oh, this is uh, breaking on me. But yeah, so why? You know, just re relight it or whatever. You know, because some of the thicker wrappers are not going to burn as even as the lighter wrappers. And people, oh, this is not uh, this is not burning property well, even it out you know it's it's a naturally made product you know the the, the maduro wrapper it, it's slower burn it, it, it's you know it's harder to burn even but you know i've gotten so many different questions on, on stuff like that uh this cigar is you know uh, it doesn't draw you know uh, and okay so what do you smoke it oh preferito okay cut both ends what do you mean? Yeah, cut both ends. You got to cut both ends when you're smoking one to, to let it. Okay, never mind. I'm sorry, I, I messed up. You know, <laughs> but but those are the questions you get around the country, and people just listen. If it's not burning right, even it out. 
but Habano's like the best rapper I love to use. Somebody wants you to talk about the Alpha Dog. What inspired that blend? Well, we did a Lazona Palooza here like five years ago. I don't know if you, if everybody knows what it is. It's a big party that we do for most of our, you know, our uh, our our fans. You know, and how do you get invited to Lazona Palooza? You have to, uh, you know, uh, you have to post our cigars, and, you know, and, and and be part of the family. So, we did one. I think it was the first one five years ago, six years ago. I don't remember and. Um, my graphic artist, Anthony, and my son, you know, they're big pranksters. So what they did was, uh, um, we let it, everyone voted on the blend. We had like four or five blends. I don't remember how many blends we had. So you had to pick one of the, your favorite blend and everyone had to vote on the blend and everyone had to vote on the, on the packaging. So my graphic artist put a, a packaging uh, of my face on one of them, you know? So that's the one everybody picked. Uh, and then the blend, whichever one that got voted the most is the is the blend that that. So I wanted to do something to to, you know, for all the fans out there, for them to have a part of 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 the cigar. So that was actually, you know, even though Hector, uh, you know, blended the cigar, you know, the, the different ones, but it was picked by by the fans. So that's the one that we did, the one that everyone. Uh, you know, enjoyed the most. So that that's how that came about. You know, I'm not that guy that wants to put my face on, on a box and stuff like that. that. I'm not that guy, you know, but that was like a joke that my son did. And that's the one that people picked. And I, and I thought, I'm not doing that. You have to, because then you're going to be known as a liar. And, you know, because that's the one that won and yada, yada, yada. So, so we ran with it. And, and let's talk about your son just for a little bit, because I know in the story, we didn't have a chance to really dive into um, him and his background, but he said you you brought him into the business. So what does he? What's his focus at Espinosa? Well, he's more involved right now. Um, he handles everything the, the the you know the day to day operations in the warehouse and stuff like that. And then he's gotten more into the packaging of the stuff that we're doing. Uh, you know, Jack handles uh, Jack Taranjo is the sales manager of the company, and, and Hector's. Uh, helps it out a lot with the uh, FDA stuff, and he does the uh, blendings, and and then we have Richie that handles key accounts, and 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 you know, and and I, uh, you know, most what I do is is travel and, and go down to Nicaragua once in a while and, and do events, and then when my son stays back home and he's uh, he's handling the day to day operations here, and and he has great ideas. You know, I listen. To, look, I'm 53 years old, but uh, I'm not I'm not that guy that. You know, I listen to young people because they have good ideas and some of the ideas, you know, I'm I'm like prehistoric when it comes to some things, you know, and what, whatever is in, well, let's 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 roll with it, you know, and, and they know that I don't, you know, I'm not a tech guy uh, that we got to do it this way. OK, you know, we need a, a a new software for the company. OK, let's get it done. You know, whatever it is, what's ever going to help to improve the company? Well, I'm all for it. You know, I remember when we did. um. You know, we have the brand La Bomba, and La Bomba is, uh, means bomb in Spanish. So all the, the, the sizes, we named them as bombs. Back in the day, this is this brand's been around for a long time, you know. Um, so it's called Atomic, Nuclear, Atom, you know. So we were doing a 7 by 70 and, and what were we going to call this? And uh, we're throwing a bunch of names out. He goes, I got it. He goes, the F-bomb. <laughs> I go, the F-bomb? He goes, yeah. You know, people cuss, they say the F-word, and I'm like, we voted on it, and that's what we got. And it's one of our biggest sellers, you, you know, and we call it the F-bomb. I mean, you know, he's got good ideas. You, you know, he's young, you know. And he knows things that I don't know, you know. And I know things that he, that he don't know, but they're, they're old stuff, you know what I mean? So so we run with it, you know. But that's that's what he does, you know. And he has his input in everything, but so, so does everybody else here. I'm not that guy, you know. We vote on things a lot, you know. So th that's the way I run my company. Because everybody's got a job to do. And I don't want excuses from anybody. Because if I want to do things my way, and if it doesn't work, then they can say, oh, well, because you did it this way. You know, so everybody votes on it, you know. I think it's a good mentality to have. And I think it shows off in your brand. Because like you said, there are, are some corporate type accounts where it has to go to so many people that your end product is so far away from like that original um, idea and that original excitement that it's kind of hard to get traction on it once it finally uh, goes through the ringer. 
<laughs> that is correct, and I and I, I but I do hold people accountable. You know, if it's your idea of a, of a brand, especially Jack, he's a guy selling, and if it didn't work, you know, that's on him. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's... like hold people accountable for what they sure. for what their ideas and what you know. <laughs> that that that's on him. Bad. Yeah, sure. You know, if, if there's a blend, the actor says, "Hey, uh, oh, this is much better than this one." Well, if it doesn't sell, that that that's on you. You know, that, and, that, and that's the way we, we, you know, we operate here. You know, great ideas are good, you know, if you implement them right and then it works. But until it doesn't bring money into the company or it doesn't bring sales, then it's not a good idea. You know, it's a good idea but if it works. So that's the way we operate here. You know, everybody, everybody here has a vote. And you talked about your background in the industry and how you, when you brought your son in, you wanted him to go work in retail to get that experience. So how important is it to have, like you said, that background? Because I know so many people, sometimes they see something like a cigar and they say, oh, I want my own cigar brand. But they have never worked in retail. They've never sold a cigar. And they just jump in that, and they jump in there thinking it's going to be great. Like, how important is it to have that experience? It, it's um, very important. Look, I'm not that guy that, that, you know, you went to school that some guys wouldn't, uh, or girls wouldn't even study and they get straight A's. I'm not that guy. I'm not that lucky. I was not that guy. You know what I mean? And and some people, that, you know, uh, I don't know if you can cuss here or not, but, you know, they, yeah. they, 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 well, some people step on shit. I'm not that guy, you know? I have a saying. If, if it was raining vaginas, a penis would hit me in the head. You, you know, <laughs> you know that, those are, that, that's who I am. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that guy. You know, I do work hard for everything that, that we have. But, you know, you, you got to have some some type of luck also. But I'm a firm believer that, you know, if somebody jumps into this business and they don't know what they're doing, they're going to have a hard time, you know, being successful. Um when you know, in any business, it doesn't have to be cigar business. Any business, you need to educate yourself, and 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 you know, and you can have your own style, your own form, and that's okay. But you should educate yourself. You should know who your competition is. You know, you should know what's the, a better way of, uh, of of doing it. You know, getting back to to look to what we were talking about coffee, and I talk about this all the time because I, I I like coffee. But look, the the the, the Starbucks model is great, but it, it's it's burnt coffee, and when you burn coffee, it's no different than a steak. If you have a good piece of steak and a bad piece of steak, what's going to taste better? The good piece of steak. But if you burn them both, they both taste the same, right? But that works for them. So how do they cover their coffee with the with the caramel, the chocolate, the vanilla, you, you, you know, the whipped cream, and and all this bullshit that they put in coffee? Okay. So, but they learn, and that's their model, and that works for them. Okay, but. That might not work for me, you know. So, but by educating yourself, okay, and learning the trade and learning the business, you have a better chance of succeeding, you know. And it, it's it's an old saying, you know, the early bird catches a, you know, catches the worm, and and that's true, you know. Nothing bad can come out of working hard, and that's what we do here. We do work hard. We do work long hours, okay, but. But we try to look, you know, and another thing that Hector does, Hector deals with a lot of the social media, you know, uh, people. So we, we, we want to know what's going out there. You know, is there a certain size that's, that's doing well for somebody? You know, not that we want to copy anybody, but, right. you know, but, you know, like Lanceros, you know, Lanceros come and go. You know, three years ago it was very hot, you know. Uh, two years ago you couldn't give one away. Now it's starting to come back, you know, so – are we going to be the last guys to make the Lanceros or we want to be one of the first guys? So we need to be on top of what's happening in the industry, you know, to, you know, to attack that. Um, and, and we're pretty good at that, um, you know, because we watch what everybody else is doing. We have, look, we have a lot of friends in the industry. Not that we want to copy anybody because we don't. We take pride in doing our own stuff, um, you know, but we want to learn the business better than anybody. And look, and and I've done just about everything there is to do in this business. Not that I know everything, but I, I like I told you before, I, I've been an independent broker, an in-house uh, 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 rep. I, uh, I had my own cigar store. I worked in a warehouse of cigars. I, I've been a sales manager. And now we have a factory, you know, so there's not much left for me to do. We don't grow tobacco because that's not something that I, that I want to do. Um, yeah, but who knows? You know, I didn't want to have a factory neither. And we, and we have a factory, so... You know, it is what it is, but 
I'm a, I'm a firm believer that, you know, uh, um, that knowledge is power, you know, knowledge is power. The more, you know, the better chance you have of succeeding. Uh, somebody wants you to speak about the comfortably numb series. Comfortably numb is a, is a brand we make for CI. Uh, there's one and two and, and, you know, um, I'm, you know, being 53, you know, um, you know, I, I was big into into rock and roll growing up, you know, and, and you know, I, I, I love the song and maybe I shouldn't say this because I don't want any, you know, anybody <laughs> attacking me with that. But, but you know, and we, we designed it. We were stuff that we were just playing around with and we did it like a little psychedelic, the uh, the bands and all that. And it's one of the best selling brands. They're doing real well with that. Um, the first one was a, like a Colorado, uh, you know, a sun grown rapper um a medium body and, it, and it's really good then we did volume two it's maduro it's and they're both doing well yeah but that's a product you have to get from uh from ci from cigars international it's, it's a brand that we make for them now when it comes to like marketing espinosa i mean do you have to do the traditional marketing like print ads and um, cigar aficionado and web banners what works for you what we're doing right now social media because first of all, it's free. Let's start with that. Um, not that I'm, I'm against cigar aficionado, cigar snob. I'm not against anything what they do. Um, you know, we we try to market it mostly in the social media. We do a lot in social media. Uh, um, and the biggest way you can market your business is for people trying your product. If you believe in your product and you hand someone a cigar, you know, um, and they try it and they got to know who you are, you know, well, you know, they're going to buy your product, you know, but there's a lot of people that never heard of our brands, you know, and how do we get those people to try our brands is knocking on doors, uh, visiting shops, uh, you know, doing these things, you know, uh, um, you know, being on there and, and just talking about our products. You know, I do a lot of uh, live videos like what we're doing now. We, we're doing a lot of Zoom now. We're doing events in Zoom. We're doing whatever it takes, you know, whatever it takes. And uh, we're just preaching the word, getting people to know who we are. And I, I know we make a good product, okay, because I know what we put in there. I'm not being conceited, uh, um, you know. Um, now, it's not for everybody, and I understand that. But when you make a good product, you know, um, and people try it and stuff, well, they're going to go back to it. That's the way I look at it. All it takes for us to, you know, have people try our product. And, and, and we do a little bit for everybody. We do a Connecticut. We do a Maduro. We do a Natural, yada, yada, yada. But a lot of companies do that. But, when, but a lot of it is, is relationships. When, look, if I didn't know you, you wouldn't have called me to, be, to, 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 to do this. This is the truth. Right. You know, um, when you get to meet people, you have a big advantage because the more people you know, the more people. And, and this guy will, you know, will tell this guy, and this guy will tell that guy, and this guy will tell that guy. And then before you know it, you know, the whole world knows who you are. And, and that's our goal. Our goal is to just preach and, and people to try our product. When it comes, since you were touching on the digital side of what you all do and how you market your products, um, how have you had to pivot in the time of like coronavirus where you're not able to be right in front of somebody in a story event. And like you talked about doing these events, have you gained any knowledge from some of the digital events you've been doing in the last couple of weeks that you didn't have before? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we, we've been doing like, it's not just me. A lot of people are doing it, you know, uh, and, and zoom and you get to know people and, and um, you know, I get on these all the time um, and I, and everybody asks me, you know, some, some questions and, you know, and then you get to know people and then, and I ask them what they do and, and, you know, and, and if, if they work, uh, you know, in the hospital, or whatever, I, I tell them, look, you need some mask or whatever, or, you know, hand sanitizer. Are you guys okay? You know, and just sending them a couple of masks or whatever, you know, that, that, that goes a long way. And, 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 um, and it's fun doing these things are fun because most people are home. You know, exactly. you, hear the dog, you hear the dog barking and, and just someone, you know, you could tell. And I always ask the same question, uh, you know, um, uh, dead or alive, you can see anybody, uh, you know, any band, who would it be? And you get to know people like, you know, like even by the band, that, you know, that they tell you, you know, um, and whatever they were born in. And, you know, a little bit, you get to know the people. Um, and, and they become fans. And, and, and so, listen, my best friends in this industry, and, that I have in life right now are through the cigar industry, 
you know, either people that I've met in cigar shops or, or owners of companies or what have you. But, you know, I have very little friends from my childhood growing up um, or, or even from high school because, you know, life changes. You, you move on. And um, like I said, the people that, you know, everybody you interact with now, you know, they become good friends and, and that's who you stay with. You know, and I, I love this industry. You get to meet people from all over the country. I did a live video. I had a guy from Iraq uh, the other day smoking a cigar, you know, and, and you just get to meet a lot of people, and, and, and it's fun. I, I'm enjoying myself more now because, look, I don't have an issue going to, to the stores and what have you, but, you know, the flight there, the waiting, the rental car and this and that, you know, that, that takes its toll on you. But, you know, I see the same guys all the time through Zoom. And I think this is not going to change. I think you're going to do a lot of events through Zoom. Even if we ever get back to to normal here, you know, um, maybe in the year uh, uh, 3,000, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I think this is this is what's it. I really do. I really think that, you know, we've, I, we've had some incredible events in, uh, on Zoom. Mm -hmm. I think so that, that's a shame. And I'm working harder now than I ever have. Uh, I mean, if being on Zoom is working, then, then I'm working hard uh, than I ever have. I do this every day. Every day, I have something going on. Yeah, and you have a big uh, virtual event tonight, don't you, for a Cigar Dojo? I do at nine o'clock. I think it's at nine. I don't even know what time it is, but you know. <laughs> but I'm not a tech guy, so let me tell you what happens to me. I, you know, this eats up your battery like like crazy, you know. And I don't have those ear pods, so and I I couldn't even find you know uh, my but you know it kills your battery then you got to charge your battery and and you know and hopefully you have en enough battery to, to 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 make it through the hole and it, it was crazy it's it's crazy i gotta get i gotta take a course on, on the iphone and your ipad and stuff like that my secret is to get a mophy case for your phone for i used to have a mophy case but i lost that somewhere but, especially yeah. for like when you do these because like you said like it mine goes down like even like an hour conversation, it'll go down half for, you know, half the battery life will be gone. Yeah. So you can just click that button on the back of your Mophie case and then you, you, you know, you'll at least have like another, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes or whatever. And, and, still using it. And 30, 30 minutes is, is key. And I use the, my iPad, but sometimes the iPad doesn't work. The volume don't work. It's always, exactly. it's always a Weird. struggle for me. <laughs> you know, it, it really is. Cause just cause I don't know it. I'm not a tech guy and it's, it's always a struggle. But like you said, it's like we're, we're all having to learn it, to learn these different platforms and the different technology because, I mean, this is looks like it's going to be the new reality for a little while. It, 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 where, I know, think so. some people who are being hopeful and they're like, oh, you know, give it a couple of months and we'll be back to somewhat normal. But I, I, just from looking at things, I mean, I don't think we'll be back to, definitely not to, you know, pre, you know, like we were in February. I don't think till next year, my person. And and look, let's be honest. How do you do an event in a shop when everybody's wearing a mask? How do you smoke a cigar with a mask? You, exactly. you know, I, I, I've seen some people with a, did a hole in them and smoking a cigar, but you know, I I I I, I really don't think that it will get back to normalcy in for a while. That's just my opinion, at least in our industry, you know. But people are smoking more, which is great. Uh, FDA has left us alone for a while, which is mm -hmm. great. Uh, um, I've gotten to meet a hell of a lot more people, you know, on Zooms and all that, you know, people that I've heard who they are, but I've never met, you know, and I haven't met them personally, but I've met them through Zoom and all that. And, uh, you know, which, which is wonderful. Um, so let, let's hope one day, you know, we can, you know, we can shake people's hand and, you know, cause I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, I shake people's hand, look them straight in the eye and all that. And you can't even do that anymore. You know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, and I do think, um, like I said, there's a lot of value in these events. So I think as we all start doing them a lot more, we'll find a way to make them even more engaging and better for everybody. So sure, um, it's been my hope that with all these events that have been going on, with all the podcasts and video casts, that people will learn more about these brands so that when they can go back to their brick and mortar stores, you know, they might be willing to try a cigar that they never tried before, but they may have heard a podcast or seen a video um, and interact with the brand owner in a way that makes them want to give it a try. So there's a lot of value in that. Absolutely. And that's all we ask for. All we ask is for someone to try our cigars. Because again, not being conceited, I'm not that guy. Uh, you know, but I do know what we put in our cigars. You know, we, we definitely put 
great ingredients in it. And, um, and when they try it, you know, they might go back for it. But the issue is a lot of people don't, oh, that one that had the blue wrapper, uh, the blue wrapper, uh, you mean the blue band? Yeah, yeah, that one, that one had a blue band. And, and, um, and um, what was it, uh, <laughs> you know, and they, they just don't remember. So I tell everybody, look, keep the band, mm -hmm. put it in your pocket or whatever. And if you liked it, y y you know, uh, um, if you liked it, then, you know, buy go back and, 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 and buy it. You know, but they just forget. They forget the name of it and all that. Um, talk about your factory for a little bit, because you're one of those companies again that saw the value in investing and in having a factory that you could call your own rather than just relying on um, other people's factories. That's correct, man. Uh, well, we, it, well, I never, I never thought of having a factory. I didn't. Uh, um, it just happened to turn out that way. What happens is when you have someone else make your cigars you know and especially if they have cigars well guess which ones they're going to make first they're going to make theirs before they make yours um and, and and you know we have waited too much you know too much time with cigars everyone said oh back orders yeah back orders that's good no it's not good you know what happens with back orders that um when you when you have back orders uh, people don't have the cigars on the shelves and they go and try something else and they forget about you and so I'm not a big fan of that, of, of having back orders. You know, um, it's good that it's selling, but, you know, you, you just don't want to have the back orders. And, and, and having the factory, we control that a little bit more. You know, it's a naturally made product, you know. Sometimes they don't have the tobacco, you know, and, and it gets harder and harder. And prices go up higher and higher, like you said. But we try, uh, you know, we can control our own destiny, Um you know, if you grow tobacco, you can control it a lot more, but that's something that we haven't done, but we have great relationships out there and, and, uh, and, you know, and, and we get almost everything that we want, you know, we get along with everybody. So, you know, I buy tobacco from a lot of different purveyors and, 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 um, and we have the upper hand because not everybody gets along and we do. So there's a lot of companies that are helped us out, you know, the Jewish states of the world that, you know, before they sold, we used to, you know, Jonathan's one of them, and Marvin, they're good friends of ours. We used to buy stuff from them, AJ, you know, a lot of these different uh, companies, you know. We had the hookup. So that's how we have the advantage. Um, just to talk about this current situation that we're in and how we can all help different people in the industry, when it comes to our brick and mortars, I mean, you obviously speak to a lot of the, the retailers in the industry. What do you think we can do as an industry to help them, you know, get over this uh, big obstacle? Look, every every state is different. You know, there's some, there's some like you're, you're in, in Pennsylvania, like, you know, I, I see Bobby there, you know, um, uh, you know, some of the stores, they don't even let you open. They don't even let you do curbside. And, and those people are in trouble, which to me is mind boggling. Because how do you let 400 people and and 400 people in a Walmart, but you can't have a guy come in with a mask, get his cigars and get the hell out? That's mind boggling to me. It really is. It's not essential. You know, so why is Walmart essential? You know, yes, some of them do sell food, but not all of them sell food. So why are they all open? You know? That makes no sense to me, okay? You can fit, you know, 400 people in a grocery store. Yes, I do I do know that you need grocery. But why Why is the, um, you know, why are the CBD stores open? You know, is that right. essential? You know, it depends who you ask. You know, I, I know I need cigars. I have to smoke a cigar, you know? It's essential to me. But it's mind-boggling to me that they won't allow them to open up and, and just you have to go in, do the proper thing, you know, wear your mask, you know? Grab your cigars. If you touch them, you sold them, okay? Or even, hey, let tell me what you want, okay? I'll get them for you, okay? Just pay me, and you're on your way. You know, they're hanging out in, in the shop and all that. I, why do they got to close them down? That, that to me, is mind-boggling. You know, we have to start opening things. We got to, you know, we, we got to start opening things up, okay? Um you know, to survive. There's people that don't even have money to eat. I mean, we, you know, we, we feed, you know, not, not myself, but you know, the city where my factory, we, we got, we feed the elderly and all that every day here. Okay. And, 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 you know, and some of these shops are closed for a while. Okay. And you got to let them open up, you know, let them make some money, 
You know, let the economy keep going now. You know, this Walmart bullshit, it's mind-boggling to me. It really is. You know, somebody wants to go smoke a cigar, let them go to the shop, buy cigars, and get the hell out. You know? It's like you said, even in some states where they have um, dispensaries, you know, you see a lot of the tobacco retailers saying, you know, the dispensary that's just down the street from them is open, but they're not able to, to be open or um, do curbside or, you know, they're getting harassed by their city to this or that. So there's a lot of discrepancies, you know, going on that um, just makes it, you know, not business friendly for um, a cigar retailer right now. Listen, I, and, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway because I'm the, I'm that guy. But look, um, Switzerland handled it very well. You know, the the, um, the if you're over 65, you know, you stay home. Everyone else, you know, do what you got to do. First of all, and and you know, and and I know people that have lost their lives because of this, but most of them are are, are elderly. Uh, um, you know. If you have a current situation, okay, that you you know you're not feeling healthy or what have you, then then you have to stay home. And I, I you know I understand that part, but not everybody has that. Look, they want to open up Major League Baseball now, but there's guys that are diabetic that play ball, and they're you know are, are these guys going to be forced to, you know to to uh, go back and play? I I, I don't know, you know I, I don't know what's going to happen, you know because they they shouldn't be out there exposed if, if they have a current condition, and I understand that. You know, but but somebody that's healthy and you know, and they want to go out there and make a living, well, it's it, it, it's on them. They they have that. They should have that choice. It's my opinion. You know, we, we've been locked down. You know, the numbers don't make sense to me. Look, and, and I shouldn't say this because if somebody's listening and they lost a family member and all, and I understand all those things. You know, and and I feel bad for for everybody that you know that lost a, a member. Um, but something's got to change. You know, we, we got to start opening these, you know, the, the floodgates. Uh, that, that's my opinion. But do it the right way. They opened up the beaches here. What happened? Nobody wore a mask. Nobody did nothing. And they had to close it back down. Listen, if you got to wear a mask, wear the mask. Exactly. And take it off. Listen, I hate wearing these masks. I really do. But when I get down to the grocery store, I have the mask. I take it off when I, you know, when I leave the grocery store, and put it back in the car and, and you know, and, and, and on to the next. I will never get down without a mask. You know, I wash my hands all the time. I'm not the guy to wear the gloves because I think the gloves are more infected than, than anything else. But do the right thing. Let's do the right thing. And if we can't open up the lounges, I understand. <clears throat> but you got to start opening up. People got to go out there and, and, and enjoy their lives. You know, um, I tell everybody, what's money? Money ain't nothing to me. It really is because I've never seen a Hertz, uh, you know, a, a U-Haul behind a Hertz. So... Um, I can care less. I want to enjoy my life. Okay. And, 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 you know, I, I go home every day. There's nothing you can do. Okay. Um, being on zoom, dude, how many movies can you watch? You know, how many times can you watch Tiger King? You know, is, <laughs> is, 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 is the truth. You know, we got to start opening up doing different things, you know, like Bobby just left or whatever, but I see pictures of shop, old Havana out there, you know, um, everyone in the back, they got to hide, but they're six feet away from each other, smoking their cigars and talking and having a good time. And then they go home, you know, um, you should know if you have a, a, a condition, you, you know what I mean? Um, and if you shouldn't be outside, then don't be outside. You know, um, I think, you know, listen, I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I, I, I think everybody, some people have had it one form or another. I know I've had it. I haven't done the test, but after TPE, a lot of people. A lot of people said that. Yes, uh, I threw up for thirty times, and I haven't thrown up in thirty years. You know, and, and yeah, I almost had to go to the hospital. Now, it, my son yeah, came back from TPE. Yeah, I saw that article that there was like a um, there was a tech show in Vegas, like a couple of weeks or one or two weeks right before TPE, and like everybody at that tech show got sick. And so everybody started to connect the dots that it was like, you know, Vegas was obviously there was something around Vegas. And because, you know, we all didn't think of, you know, oh, wash your hands. Well, hopefully people thought of washing their hands, but they didn't think of being as like, uh, sure, you, what they are you, now. You, you, you would shake hands with people right. and all that. Exactly. Do you remember a, a lot of the Asian people have wore masks throughout the whole show, which I, I never understood. I didn't ever know because I didn't hear anything about what was going on at the time or whatever, but, um, you know, there were some people there that had masks and all that. And, you know, I didn't think anything of it. But when I my son come, came back and 
he had a high fever and and you know he was short of breath and all that and me i i, I threw up you know for two days straight um now did i have it i don't know i i you know i i gotta do the test to see if i have that the antibodies. The antibodies. Stuff. I, I haven't done it yet because I ain't putting that shit up my nose, bro. That shit fucking. <laughs> I, I, I had the flu one time, you know, uh, you know, and um, and that thing is bad, man. You know. So you in know. the last few minutes, can you tell us anything about what's what can we look forward to coming out of Espinosa this year? Well, a lot of things is, uh, you know, and some of these guys out there, they're elite members because I see them out there, and we're, we're going to have that soon. Um, we're definitely doing the Warhead. Um, I don't think the trade show is going to happen this year. Uh, I really don't. Um, you know, it, it's hard to work on new things because, you know, the they got to make sure band isn't working. They got to make sure boxes isn't working. You know, it's tough. It's tough to have new product. We're definitely working on the on the Warhead. I believe it's the six. You know, that's already in, 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 in place. Um so uh, we're definitely going to ship out the elite in, in about a couple weeks, um, you know. And and we had a couple of things that we were working on, and we've had to, you know, put a halt to it because, you know, a lot of people like I tell you right now, like the Larange, the wrapper for the Larange, where we get it from, they've been closed for a while, so we haven't been able to get that wrapper. So there's a lot of things that we wanted to do that we can't do because it's you know beyond our control. Um, but we're definitely doing the warhead is going to come in a perforito size, the same size that, that we we did. It's a five by fifty eight. Um, that should be done within a month. Um, we just let them sit for a while, and 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 that's about it. You know, as far as new products go, we're definitely doing the six province. Hopefully, you know, the things will be done. You know, um, and and a lot of stuff we've had to squash. You know, maybe we'll do them later on. But as of right now, you know, since nobody's working, it's just crazy out there. Now we're doing what we got to do, you know, and the fact that we, we put, we, we, you know, we, everyone's got to wash their hands, you know, we, we, you know, most, most of the pairs are either married or, or they live together or what have you. So, but we separated everybody. Um, we are continuing to work uh, at the factory, but we're doing the right things, you know, um, you know, we have Lysol, you know, I, I forget what it's called. It's not Lysol. It's an off brand, but we, you know, we, we do have it down there. Um, you know, we do have hand sanitizer down there. So we're working as hard as we can because I, I believe there's going to be a shortage of cigars. I really do. There's a lot more cigar smoking and there's a lot of people that are closed. And we're selling cigars here like crazy. We really are, you know, um, mostly through, you know, the shops that are open and, and, and the catalog companies. But we are. We're, we're selling a lot of cigars. And for people who want to follow you or follow the Espinosa brand online and on social media, what account should they be looking at? I, ha I have no idea, bro. I don't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> in the zone, look for me at Eric Espinosa on, on, you well, know. Tell them to, to, to Google Espinosa the, the, Cigars. Yeah, dude, they can find it. I have no idea. I don't I do that. Espinosa Cigars is on Instagram. <laughs> my son. on Facebook. You're all everywhere. Yeah, I think Hector's there. Have Hector a... Uh, 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 text it. Hector texted them. I have no idea whether it is. You know, <laughs> I, I even though I handle my my own account, I really do. I handle my own account, uh, but um, I don't even know. I'm not. You know, I'm not a, a real tech guy. You know, um, it's funny. I was talking to Kevin Keith and who was the protocol. He's one of the owners of Protocol. So uh, I'm in a call with him and I put him on speakerphone. I had to check an email and I'm telling him, dude. I got to put you on, uh, I forgot to put him on speaker to talk to him while I'm on, you know, while I'm checking the email. I, go, I don't know how to come back to my, you know, to, to the phone. How do you, do? the little green button on the top. And I said, oh shit, you know, so it's just been those cigars.com. So, um, and I pressed the green button. I, I got back to the, to the call. I'm like, holy shit. I didn't even notice this. <laughs> I was born in the wrong era, man. When I was born, I mean, when I went to high school, there was no computers. As soon as I and I went to college to learn how to fix computers, you know. And it's funny. I I don't. If you look, this is my desk uh, uh, in the back. I, you know, I don't even have a, a computer back here. I refuse to have a computer. I let everybody else, you know, uh, handle that. I, I'm pretty good at my laptop, and I'm, I'm I'm decent with the iPhone. So that's all I. That's all I need. Well, we're at the end of our time together, but I wanted to thank you for taking an hour out of your day to 
Anytime, man. And I appreciate everything you do for the cigar industry. I really do. I know you're getting a little bit more and more popular, and, and that's great. That means you're going in the right direction, man. I, and, and I appreciate it. I, I know a lot of people that were on there. I don't know how many people were on there, but a lot of the guys that were on there, you know, I, I knew. So so kudos to you on, on, on what you're doing, you know. Oh, thank you. I'm trying. <laughs> well, I look forward to whenever our next Hopefully it's uh, sooner rather than later. And you're you're more uh, than welcome when this whole shit, you know, starts going back to to, to normal. Um, you're always more than welcome to take take a flight down here or a drive. It ain't that bad of a drive. You're more than welcome to sit down and have a cigar and and you know we can talk about you know things that are going on. Yeah, and we definitely have to do a story for uh, Cigars and Leisure magazine because we're looking into relaunching that in the in some way or shape or form. So um, there's definitely more opportunities for Espinosa to have some little editorial coverage and whatever I'm working on. So I'm looking forward to following up with you on that as well. How's things in North Carolina? You can get anything that you need and stuff like that? Uh, it's, it's pretty good. It's not bad. Uh, uh, we get, Down here now, now we got all the toilet paper we, we, we want now. Uh, now for whatever reason it's eggs. We went from toilet paper to eggs down here. Oh, we're, we're all, it's like meat here. But yeah. We we they've been doing these these um chicken processors have these big events now where they will sell you like 40 40 pounds of chicken and people have been lined like cars lined up halfway down the highway of, of trying to get these so um one came to our city this morning so i pre-ordered went out at eight o'clock this morning picked it up so you know and then had my mom come over gave her half of it so we're we're pretty good on that. No, we 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 normally can get anything here. You know, we're in Miami. You can get anything here. You, you know, uh, I don't think there's a shortage of anything down here. I mean, you got to know where you're going too. You know, a lot of people don't understand. Like people go to the grocery stores, go to Walgreens, go to CVS. You know, because a lot of people don't think that they have things, and they do. Um, you know, I remember when the whole shortage of toilet paper. I went to CVS and I got like, I told the lady, "Look, man, I'm." And I was taking it to a, a home, you know, old folks place. And, and um, I grabbed as many as I wanted, you know. So you got to go to, like, little holes in the walls and stuff. And, you know, I haven't been able to get a can of Lysol here for a long time. When they added a Nicaragua, that an off-brand. But, they, you know, we got it for, for our place. But I haven't seen a can of Lysol here in, I don't know, three months. Well, I think yeah. Instagram is getting ready to cut us off. So I just want right. to you, have you, a proper yeah. goodbye. Like I said, right. I will – be in touch and stay safe and tell everybody at Espinosa I said hello. You got it. All right. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for what you do. Thanks, brother.